Mickey and I started out the uh, first time many, many years ago. McDonald's, I liked the sound of it. It sounded uh, wholesome and it sounded genuine. Two of the 20th century's most successful and influential entrepreneurs shared a remarkably similar origin story. Walt Disney and Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's, not only served in the same ambulance corps in World War I, but in a bizarre series of coincidences, born less than a year apart, they both lied about their age to enlist. Both were born in Illinois, grew up in the Midwest, and ended up moving to Southern California to establish two of the most iconic brands in history. In 1918, as the First World War was drawing to a close in Europe, Walt Disney wanted to follow in the footsteps of his older brother Roy to join the fight. Rejected by the U.S. Navy for being too young, Walt instead joined the Red Cross after forging the date on his birth certificate. At the same time, Ray Kroc, aged only 15, joined the Red Cross too, also lying about his age. Both Disney and Kroc were assigned to the same unit, both serving as ambulance drivers. The war ended shortly after they enlisted, but the two were familiar enough with each other, with Kroc mentioning in one of his letters home, Disney was regarded as an odd duck because whenever we had time off and went out on the town to chase girls, Walt stayed in camp drawing pictures. After the war, Walt's picture drawing sure paid off. He eventually grew his small animation company into an entertainment empire. This little fellow is bashful. He's secretly in love with Snow White. Meanwhile, Kroc only found success in his early 50s after years working as a salesman. In 1954, he negotiated to run the newly formed McDonald's franchise from the original founders, brothers Dick and Mac McDonald. Franchise. Big pardon? Franchise. Franchise the damn thing. It's too damn good for just one location. There should be McDonald's everywhere, coast to coast, sea to shining sea. Around the same time, Walt was preparing to open his long-planned dream project, Disneyland. Now on a site of uh, 240 acres near the city of Anaheim in Southern California, right about in here, we've begun to build Disneyland the place. We hope that it will be unlike anything else on this earth. Kroc wrote to him in the hope of opening a McDonald's restaurant in the theme park. Dear Walt, I have very recently taken over the national franchise of the McDonald's system. I would like to inquire if there may be an opportunity for a McDonald's in your Disney development. With only three McDonald's restaurants running at the time, it was a long shot. Walt not taking Kroc too seriously, politely brushed off his proposal, with McDonald's being much too small an enterprise. Dear Ray, it was nice to hear from you again after all these years. As to the possibility of McDonald's having a part in Disneyland, I will have to refer your letter to Mr. Wood, who is in charge of concessions. I do not handle this phase of the business, but instead, I confine my activities to the creative end of the project. With my regards and all good wishes, Walt. Walt instead focused on other popular food brands of the day to operate in the park. Rumor has it that Disney demanded Croc increase the price of French fries from five cents to 10 cents, with Walt keeping the upmarked profit. Croc outright rejected the idea. This is likely a tall tale on Croc's part. However, Disney's rejection did push him to work even harder. A few years later, he bought out the McDonald's brothers to become sole owner. Dick Pack, let's make a deal. And the company grew to be the biggest fast food chain in the world. Walt died in 1966 while planning his new, even bigger theme park development, Disney World, in Florida. By the 1970s, McDonald's had grown so profitable that Kroc planned to open his own theme park. The park, which he dubbed Western World, was to be located in the San Fernando Valley and would directly compete with Disneyland. But the McDonald's board of directors promptly put an end to Kroc's plan, fearing the venture would lose money and draw revenue away from the restaurant business. By the early 1980s, the fortunes of both corporations had somewhat flipped. Without Walt, the Disney company was spiraling into a state of creative decline and urgently needed cash. McDonald's, on the other hand, was growing faster than ever. Kroc even toyed with the idea of buying out the struggling Disney company. 
But by then, his role as chairman of the company was largely ceremonial, and nothing came of it. Kroc never forgot Walt's snub in 1955, believing McDonald's should have been part of the early success of Disneyland. Ray Kroc died in 1984. Years later, after the Disney company bounced back, they finally did collaborate with McDonald's. In 1995, the first McDonald's restaurant eventually opened in Walt Disney World, Florida. Both companies have maintained close business ties ever since. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.